Honorable Dr. Kani Moji, NVN Somo. Thank you, Vice Chairman, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. The new and renewable energy is going to be the very crucial for saving the Earth and for the safe journey of human beings on this planet Earth, sir. It's just not power generated from the non-fossil energy sources like the sun or the wind or the biodegradable waste. But it's a life-saving mechanism that is indis indispensable to renew our Mother Earth. It is the only way to free our next generation from the clutches of the ill effects of the greenhouse gases and depletion of the ozone in the atmosphere. Sir, the rising sun is always indispensable for the development of our country. Wind power in India has a strong manufacturing base with 20 manufacturers of 15 different wind turbine models of international quality up to 3 megawatt in size with exports to Europe, United States and other countries. Sir, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat are the two champion states in harvesting the wind energy. Maharashtra, Karnataka, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh contribute substantial energy generated from the windmills. At the moment, Tamil Nadu contributes 11,000 megawatt energy out of 45,000 megawatt wind energy produced in the country. So the primary objective for developing the renewable energy in India is to advance the economic development, improve energy security, improve access to energy and mitigate climate change. India is responsible for nearly 70% of the global carbon emissions, sir. Ranked fourth next to China, that is 26.83, the USA 14.36, and the Europe 9.66, causing climate change and also severe damages to the ecological balance in the world. So we have imported hundreds of millions of tons of coal and continue to import several million tons for our domestic need. It is very important for our country to reduce the reliance on coal and oil in the coming years. There is an urgent need to find alternate sources for generating electricity. A country must have a rapid and global transition to renewable energy technologies to achieve sustain sustainable growth and avoid catastrophic climate change. So renewable energy sources play a private uh, role in securing sustainable energy with lower carbon emissions. The union government has to develop and design more proactive policy programs and a liberal environment to attract foreign investments to upscale India in the renewable energy market at the rapid rate. One of the other advantages of renewable energy sector is that it is expected to create a large number of domestic jobs over the following years, given the numerous potential of renewable energy in the country, coherent policy measures and investor-friendly administration might be the key dividers of India to become a global leader. Sir, Tamil Nadu, under the Dravidian model rule, spearheaded by our Honorable Chief Minister Talabadi M.K. Stalin, is pioneer in the adoption of the clean energy and has positioned itself at the forefront of India's transition towards clean energy sources. To achieve energy self-sufficiency, the state government has made significant efforts in solar wind and other renewable energy sources. Tamil Nadu's contribution to climate action has gained international recognition. So the government of Tamil Nadu and 24-1-2024 has accorded approval for formation of Green Energy Company in the name of Tamil Nadu Green Energy Corporation Limited to take over the green energy activities like the hydro, wind and the solar of uh, Tangitco and to take over functions of the Tamil Nadu Energy Development Agency. The main objectives of this are to fast track the energy transmission from 22% of renewable energy mix to 50% promoting the hydro generation operation and maintenance of existence hydro generating stations, promoting hydro projects and pump storage projects, promoting large scale solar and wind projects, promoting rooftop installations for residential sectors, promoting non-fossil fuel based generation such as biomass, a new RE hybrid policy to increase <laughs> RE penetration, effective utilization of existing transmission and distribution by infra by maximizing the technical effort. <coughs> to get green funds at a lower cost. With the installed capacity of 19,628 megawatts, Tamil Nadu holds third position in India in renewable energy installed capacity, sir. Sir, Tamil Nadu is the first state in the country towards implementing repowering of old windmills owned by private wind power generators, and so far as 96 old windmills with 26 megawatt have been repowered. As on date, 1,368 windmills have the capacity of 961.98 megawatts to be benefited by the repowering. Sir, Tamil Nadu has hastened 11,033 million units of solar power from the installed solar power units of the state transmission utility during the year 2023-2024.
Sir, I would just like to make a few suggestions. The union government should fund generously from the financial arms of the REC and the PFC. The, solar, the government should be insisting RBI banks to generate renewable energy products under the priority sector lending. They should, the union government should collaborate with the state governments and private institutions to establish land banks with fully ready-made lands for establishing solar and wind power plants. They should also create a dedicated green energy corridor grid connectivity. They should also do a multi-ministerial agreement to create a dedicated transport channel, sir. Sir, the union government has allocated 19,100 crore of Ministry of Renewable and Energy for the year 2024. The union government is expected to add 15 to 18 gigawatt power for the year. For, the, for this kind of acceleration our country wants to achieve, this allocation seems to be highly inadequate. The execution timeline of the capacity addition would continue to hinge on the regulatory stance towards import duties on cell and modules, support towards domestic cells and modules manufacturing, and indigestion was pushed towards domestic equipment sourcing. So the ambitious Pradhan Mandri Surya Gar Mufti Bijli Yojana, which aims at providing subsidized rooftop solar installations to one crore households, has been nearly allocated 10,000 crore this year, sir. The government gives rupees 30,000 as a subsidiary for the 1 kvh rooftop solar and 60,000 to the 2 kvh rooftop solar and 78,000 for the 3 kvh and above. To generate 300 units of power per month, a 3 kvh rooftop system has to be installed. Sir, if a person wants to install a 3 kvh rooftop solar system in his house, the maximum subsidiary he gets is 78,000 only. He has to spend an additional amount of 2 lakh rupees to achieve this, sir. By the government still has to audacity to boast that they provide 3,300 units of power free every month. Another such project is the PM Kusum, that is Pradam Mantri Kisan Urja Suraksha Ivam Uttan Mahabiyan scheme, has been launched by the Ministry of the Renewable Energy for setting up subsidized solar pumps and distributed solar power plants across the country. It is one of the biggest initiative wherein the farmers would be benefited, that's what they say, but the CFS has a 30% of benchmark cost for the tender cost, which is very, very lower. By the state government, it's only 30% subsidy, and the remaining 40% has to be bared by the farmers. For the government to call such a scheme as free, it needs to be spent the whole amount, but asking the people to spend 2 lakh under these projects and calling it free is totally unjustifiable. There is a saying in the Tamil, sir, Ni arsi konduvaan, umi udi odi tingala. It means you bring rice, says the uh, government. The government will bring the husk, we'll mix both, we will uh, uh, take away the husk and both of us eat the rice. This is not justice, sir. Most of the centrally sponsored schemes are like this. There are several pertinent questions about the financial assistance provided by the PFC Limited and the REC Limited. There is a proverb saying, It is like hiding a big pump in the, the thali what we eat. It is a warning bell for the union government which needs to change this attitude. Otherwise, people of India will shoot them the exit gate. Thank you, sir. Thank you.